Ah, God damn it, it's still a bit too hot. <sighs> okay, guys. <clears throat> Sorry for the fact that my voice sounds like utter shit right now. I have something happening with my allergies. I'm making my voice sound absolutely horrible at the moment. So I apologize for that in advance. Now, things to talk about for this week of FPS Weekly, which, if I am not mistaken, is FPS Weekly number 10. And if for those of you that are unaware, the reason why there was no FPS Weekly last week um, was because there was supposed to be a recording session that we did at uh, here at Digital Dynasty. And let's just say that it was had very good intentions and high hopes and just kind of fell flat on its face. Yeah, so that happened. Unfortunately, uh, as a result, there was uh, I would predict there'd be no time for me to work on FPS Weekly or do anything like that. So no FPS Weekly last week, but that's fine. There weren't really any stories from last week that were compelling. But this week, there are lots of stories that are compelling. That's something else I'm doing. I'm kind of switching up my style with FPS Weekly. Instead of covering every single fucking thing that exists in the FPS universe or first-person universe as a whole, instead now I'm going to, only going to cover the things that I find interesting and side things that are happening. Because, I mean, gameplay reveal trailers, trailers of stuff, games that are coming out that I find interesting, uh, remotely interesting or whatever, but I've not really played and I therefore don't have much, much perspective on. Not really a thing anymore. And this is going to be stuff that I find particularly interest, particularly interesting, and is going to be included on the discussions for the week. So, without further ado, let's get started. Let's get this party started and yeah, let's get this party started. Okay, I'll stop now. Sorry. First things first, Deus Ex Mankind Divided it apparently is not going to force you to kill uh, bosses inside the game. Because that was something that a lot of people praised about Deus Ex Human Revolution, was the way that you could play through the game any way that you really wanted to. If you wanted to go full-blown stealth, you could do that. If you wanted to be a mindless killing machine, you could do that too. But the way that the game's storyline played out, you had to kill the bosses in order to progress, and that kind of kind of messed with some people. They didn't really care for that, and I can see why that that, that kind of perspective is uh, is a little bit disappointing and something that you really don't want to see happening. With that, because that kind of throws it off. Like, oh, if I'm going through 100% stealth mode, and then it's like you must kill the boss. Kind of kind of makes that not really happen. And also, if you're going full out stealth and you're not practicing combat, or you're not, and you're not doing the stuff that would be necessary for you to defeat the boss. So, according to the developers, Mankind Divided is going to change the way that those things are done. Continuing on from there, the uh, Fallout 4 Pip Boy Edition is sold out permanently. Like literally, uh, it's out of production. They are not going to make any more Fallout 4 Pip Boy editions ever. Like just not happening. So, despite the utter massive demand for this, and Bethesda has stated that this is not their fault or anything on their part, it is because of the factories that they've gone with to make the Pip-Boy edition. Uh, the factories have just reached capacity they cannot produce anymore. So, if you have picked up a, or reordered or reserved a Pip-Boy edition, good for you. You are going to have a collector's item that is probably going to be worth a lot of money in 15 or 20 years. So, good on you. You picked up a valuable piece of gaming history. For those of you that didn't, unless you can manage to find one on eBay as a or something else with a with a resale, you are S O L, my friend. You are shit out of luck. Up shit creek without a paddle. Basically fucked over. So that's on you, and I am sorry that there is no gentler way to present that information. Very sorry to hear that. Well, sorry for the people that did not get Pippo Edition. I personally have a uh, minor interest in Fallout 4. I find it compelling, not so much compelling enough that I get a Pippo Edition. Uh, so it doesn't really affect me that much. But if it affected you, I am sorry for your loss. Because it honestly was difficult to, to even get a pre order or a reserve for it at all because of the mass, mass demand for it. It's just like. Like instant, it was like instantly sold out the first time. 
within like an hour of the E3 press conference. So yeah, that doesn't really surprise me too much. But yeah, not much else to say in regards to the Fallout 4 Pip-Boy Edition. So just throw that out. Lineup of FPS stories for the week. Uh, Titanfall is getting a free-to-play version in Asia. God damn it, Asia, why do you get all the cool stuff? Compels me to drink some more of this unbearably hot coffee. No, not the GTA San Andreas sex mod, you dirty bastards. Instead, Titanfall, yeah, Titanfall is, is uh, uh, this company Nexon who is responsible for the port of CSGO that is free to play and also recently Dirty Bomb. And apparently they're like a super huge developer slash publisher entity thing, like even bigger than EA, which is shocking. And they're in works with Respawn Entertainment, the developers behind Titanfall to produce a free-to-play version of Titanfall for the Asian market. So that's cool, that's awesome. I never really got a chance to play Titanfall that much. Never having owned an Xbox One when it was popular, and uh, never uh, at my PC net at the time when it came out, just being absolutely not even close to being able to play it. So that's a thing. But, uh, and I, I'm pretty disappointed about that. So, it'd be really awesome, Nexon, if you're listening, if one of your people happens to watch FPS Weekly, in which case I commend you. Thank you. Thank you for watching FPS Weekly and bringing attention to this small and soon to be a thriving channel. Uh, please make Titanfall free to play version available elsewhere in the world, like North America. That'd be super fantastic. Do that? Alright, thanks. More news from EA is that apparently there's going to be a Battlefield game coming out in 2016. This really shouldn't surprise anyone, considering that they have stated that they wanted to annualize the release of the Battlefield franchise. And with Battlefield 4 having, coming out, having been available in 2013, and then 2014 being kind of like a skip year, but not really, because Battlefield Hardline was supposed to come out in 2014 before it was delayed to, to March of this year. Um, and then Battlefront coming out this year. Kind of makes sense that um, Battlefield 5, presumably, is going to be coming out in 2016. Although, my personal hope would be that it's something super futuristic. So, like Battlefield 2142-2. I, I never played Battlefield 2142, but I've watched gameplay of it in, uh, from YouTube and stuff. And man, did that game look awesome. I know that uh, my friend uh, Sir Grogshire he would want it to be uh, Battlefield 1942 2. <laughs> Him and uh, Papa Grogs, probably, both uh, Kyle and Austin. Pretty sure they would they would appreciate that being a thing. But uh, there's no word on what it will be, just that it's going to be a Battlefield game and it's coming out sometime next year. That's all I can tell you. So for all you modders out there, this will probably be like a double-edged sword type deal for you. Because Doom is... the developers have stated that it's getting mod support, but only in the limitations of something called snap map and snap map is basically a, yeah, a level editor slash game mode creator thing that id software is presenting with with doom and will allow you to make your own custom levels and stuff but you can't do anything like super over the top like in quotes from the article from the person who said it you can't make like a 30 high 30 story high massive cavernous map that's gigantic and just spreads way out. You can't really do that. Uh, it's going to be like tighter, more confined spaces, more controlled spaces, things of that nature. And like they alluded to that maybe you can make some game modes and, and do some more custom stuff with it, but they didn't really go into specifics. So I guess we're going to just gonna have to wait and see what happens when Doom is released or early next year. Because quite frankly, I, I don't really know what else there would be to to do. I'm not a modder, even though I'm a programmer. I can't really talk much about that. So, Doom has modding, but not really, but yes, but kind of no. So, for those of you that uh, are aware of my absolute love, 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 gotta put in the dubstep thing right there. Whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> Battlefront, Star Wars Battlefront, of course, has just had a gameplay trailer released. Uh, showing off fighter gameplay and my god does it make me super super happy like to be frank my personal views on this and what it's like is really quite literally this is how i feel
so yeah pretty much just like that like just give it to me give me the game <sighs> november 17th really cannot come fast enough because i'm going to be playing the absolute utter living shit out of that game and especially have even more reason to now i'm literally going to be doing nothing else but star wars battlefront come that time in november uh yeah so black ops 3 you look compelling but i'm sorry you're not you're not you're not the battlefront uh, just kind of slaps you aside i'm sorry to say it but it's true so uh go away and make way for the brilliance that is Star Wars Battlefront. And now for the last news story of the week, Overwatch is now listed on Battle.net, and which, uh, for those of you that are unaware, Battle.net is Blizzard's own app thing um, for their games. It's a lot like EA, EA's Origin, or, or Steam, or uh, Ubisoft's Uplay, stuff like that, where it's like a listing of their games. You can buy the games, buy the packs for the games, whatever. So Overwatch just got listed on, on Battle.net, which is important. It wouldn't really be important otherwise, but it's important because it gives an indicator as to when the beta for Overwatch is going to actually be available. Um, and basically what that means is that sometime soon. Now, if that could be any, anything, quoting the article from next week to next month to whatever but probably sometime this fall is when the beta is going to finally drop, and I am super excited for that. And on top of that, I uh, got a new character introduction. This guy's name is Lucio. I think it's Lucio. It could be Lucio. I don't know. His name's not said in, in the trailer, so I don't really know exactly how the pronunciation goes, but that's how things go in the world of stuff, which is everything. And Lucio, I'm gonna call him, I'm gonna call him Lucio until I get reference that his name is actually like Lucio, or whatever, I don't know. Uh, he uses a sonic projectile weapon to create like sonic bursts to attack people, and he like rolls around on energy skates. So cool, I guess, don't really know what to say about that. Uh, I don't know, I'd have to play Overwatch playing as the character, or better yet, actually get to see like his ability in depth trailer thing that all the Overwatch characters get uh, shortly after their announcement that like details exactly what they do and how how it works before I could really get a grasp on what kind of playstyle he's suited for. So that's that's whatever. Um, but yeah, that is all the stories that we have this week for uh, FPS Weekly. I am not as hyper as I was the last time that I did this. Um, kind of trying to go for a more energized but not hyper vibe thing even though i did eat a spoonful of coffee again which quite honestly even though i'm partial to coffee is really the worst form of coffee that there is eating a spoonful of raw coffee it makes it super super concentrated and like think of black coffee right just black coffee no cream no sugar nothing but think of that concentrated like five times in your mouth it's horrible <laughs> because it's so bitter and it's just like uh, if I didn't need this to get a, a massive shot of caffeine in my system, I would not be doing this. Um, and the coffee that I've made is instant coffee, so there's not really a ton of caffeine in it. So, yeah, take that for what you will. I'm just rambling on about coffee at this point in time, and I should be concluding the episode of FPS Weekly. So, I'll do just that. This is Logical, and I will see you guys next week for episode number 11 of FPS Weekly, which will be the 14th of August. Hooray. See you guys later.